Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I am Rachel Paul with IAAP and I am joined by Samantha Evans also with IAAP and we are here today with Louise McQuillan and Donna Thompson from Textile. And before we get started with our webinar today, just a few housekeeping items to go over. One, all your lines are muted to prevent any background noise or disruptions. Closed captioning is available. You can select the closed captioning option on your screen. And there's also a link in the chat. It should be the last post for third party captioning as well, if you prefer that option. We will be pausing for questions at the end. We'll have time for that. But throughout today's uh, webinar, please feel free as you think of questions to put them in the chat or uh, in the Q&A box. The, today's webinar is recorded and will be available afterwards. And also we can provide a copy of today's presentation slides. And so I think we are ready to begin. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our to our presenters, Donna and Louise. Thank you. And Don and Louise, I believe your microphone's still on mute. Louise, are you okay? Oh, yep. Uh, I'm here now. You are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Louise, so, would you hi, like everyone. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name uh, is Louise. I am the Accessibility Solutions Manager at TextHelp. Um, I have been working at TextHelp for about eight years. Um, so my role uh, has been quite varied over the years, um, working within our North American, Australian and our European markets. Um, now my role is focused primarily in working in the UK, uh, supporting both the public and private sectors. Uh, I'm really trying to educate and promote the importance of accessibility both externally and internally for an organisation um, to drive that digital uh, inclusion globally. So it's great to carry on the conversation after today's session. So please feel free to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. So thanks very much. Hey everyone. Um, so my name is Donna Thompson and I'm Marketing Manager at TextHelp. Uh, so I've worked in marketing for over 15 years now and you know, as much as it continues to evolve at a, an incredibly fast pace, particularly in line with developments in technology, the fundamentals remain the same. You know, our purpose is really to help identify and satisfy and retain customers. And at TextHelp, we work very closely with our customers to help shape our product roadmap and to continue to build innovations that solve customer problems. We also work alongside experts in the field of neurodiversities to really inform our content and help as many organizations as possible to better support their staff with neurodiverse conditions. So um, I'll kick off the presentation today. Uh, so first of all, of course, welcome to today's session. Um, as Rachel has already outlined, Louise and I will discuss uh, some of the everyday challenges faced by neurodiverse colleagues and how best to overcome these. We'll also introduce you to our powerful productivity tool, Read and Write, that's already helping millions of people with varying needs all over the world to work smarter, more efficiently, and more accurately. And really, by the end of the session, we hope you'll have a deeper understanding of the solutions required to create a truly inclusive working environment. So let me start by telling you a little bit about TextHelp. I'm sure some of you may have heard of us before, uh, but if not, uh, let me give you a quick overview. So we are headquartered in Ireland, you can probably tell by the accents, and we have over 20 years experience in providing education and workplace support to individuals with neurodiverse conditions. So we started out in a small town called Antrim, we're still there, uh, but we now also have a global presence with offices in Boston in the US and in Brisbane, Australia. And with a huge network of channel partners spanning the globe, we continue to grow at a pretty fast pace. So as a company, 
Um, here are a couple of accolades that uh, we're very proud of. So just before Christmas last year, we were awarded Investors in People Platinum Award. And with only 2% of organisations across the UK and Ireland receiving this accolade, it's a really special one for us. We're also disability confident employers. And disability confident is a UK government scheme that encourages employers to think differently about disability and take action to improve how they recruit, retain and develop people with disabilities. So there's three levels to the scheme and you can't skip any steps. Uh, every organisation starts at the bottom and works their way up from committed to employer and then finally leader. Uh, we've worked really hard to achieve our employer status, but of course we won't stop until we've achieved leadership status because this scheme really is at the heart of everything that we do. So at TextHelp, we also take security and the privacy of all of our customer data very seriously, which is why we are ISO 27001 certified. So ISO 27001 is the internationally recognized best practice framework for an information security management system. It's one of the most popular information security standards worldwide. And by implementing the framework, we ensure that everything we do is secure from computer security, physical security, the broader cyber security and other technical processes. So taking a, a very brief look at the solutions that we provide uh, at TextHelp, we have a range of secure software products that support many different needs in many different environments. But um, today, you know, to focus on the workplace environment, we have three key solutions. And first up, we have BrowseLoud. This is our digital inclusion software that removes the barriers faced by many disabled people and non-native speakers when browsing the web. SpeechStream is our accessibility toolbar that can be integrated into e-learning and educational platforms to again, remove any barriers that might exist for people with disabilities and non-native speakers. And then the solution that Louise will touch on a little bit uh, more later today is Read and Write. And this is our discrete support uh, tool that is helping millions of people all over the world to communicate better both in school and at work. So and here we have uh, just a, a sample of some of the organizations across the US and Canada that we're already working with to support their neurodiverse workforce. So as you can probably see, these organizations are from a whole range of industries from government, health, and the private sector to name a few. So enough about us, uh, I think we'll delve uh, straight into today's session by asking the question, what is neurodiversity? So it's a non-existent list that might include dyslexia, autism, Asperger's, dyspraxia, ADHD and others. Research suggests that one in seven people are neurodiverse. And the most common neurodiverse trait is dyslexia, with 10% of the population having dyslexia and 4% severely so. So neurodiversity is the natural range of difference in brain functions. Uh, globally, the awareness of neurodiversity is increasing, and this may be through increased diagnosis of conditions, celebrities sharing their experiences, for example, Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson, and his dyslexia blogs. It could also be the fact that neurodiversity is being viewed from a different perspective where unique strengths as well as challenges are being realized. Or perhaps it's because companies are searching for that competitive advantage through innovation and creativity. So looking at autism, uh, more than 3.5 million Americans live with autism. In 2018, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued its autism prevalence report. And this report concluded that the prevalence of autism has risen to one in every 59. That's twice as great as the 2004 rate of one in 125. So the spotlight shining on autism as a result has opened opportunities for the nation to consider how to serve people on the autism spectrum and their families, both at home and at work. ADHD is reported to occur in over 4% of ad the adult population in the US. And ADHD diagnosis for adults can take up to seven years. So these types of non-apparent disabilities are more understood now than just a few years ago. 
the organisations are starting to become aware of the variety of exceptional skills that enable neurodiverse individuals to thrive in roles ranging from sales assistant, computer programmer, journalist and statistician, just to name a few. And therefore, organisations are growing acutely aware of the importance of ensuring work environments are welcoming to neurodiverse staff. And I think it's also worth noting here that adjustments and considerations that organisations can make to help support neurodiverse colleagues, um, including, for example, a more transparent recruitment process or improved communication will also benefit neurotypical staff members too. So neurodiverse individuals bring lots of talent to the workplace, including the ability to look at things from a different perspective and suggest unique and innovative solutions to business challenges. In other words, it's a lot easier for them to think outside the box. So thinking about the careers that people with neurodiversities would really flourish uh, due to their unique abilities, um, they include the creative industries. So thinking about how they would interpret and visualize designs. The IT industries, thinking about how their data analysis, analysis and task oriented abilities would be a really great strength. So embracing neurodiversity and disability confidence has great business benefits for organizations. It can help capture new markets, demonstrate relevance to clients and consumers and build brands. So promoting disability confidence really is central to attracting and retaining talent and can offer significant product, productivity benefits uh, to any organisation. In fact, a recent study undertaken by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and reported on in the Harvard Business Review found that neurodiverse teams are around 30% more productive than neurotypical teams. High profile business people politicians and celebrities have spoken openly about their neurodiversity, such as Apple co-founder Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, HP co-founder William Hewlett and filmmaker Steven Spielberg. Many of these individuals have credited their success to having neurodiverse traits, clearly showing how alternative thinking styles can make a real impact in business. And many of the world's most successful business people will tell you that the difference between success and failure in business comes down to your staff. So let's take Steve Jobs, for example. Steve Jobs didn't just innovate new products. His energy and passion, his communication skills, his ability to connect ideas, problem solve and to think outside the box completely revolutionise the way the world communicates both verbally and visually, how it accesses and consumes music and captures and shares images and memories. So his inventions have transformed how we communicate with each other and the world around us. He has turned the internet into something that was previously static and fixed, into something that we ca carry around in our pockets every day, so we can share and retrieve information on the go. So not only that, but his innovation sparks the creation of other innovations to the extent that by next year, 2021, 40% of the world's population is projected to own a smartphone. So thinking of Steve and the others on the slide deck and considering the skills and talents that can make our businesses more competitive, what do all of these people have in common? The answer is neurodivergence. And really, this sentiment is echoed by Thomas Crampton in a recent EY research report. So Thomas is Global Chair of Digital at Edelman. In his assessment, the business community has a terrible record of integrating people with disabilities, even though the business case for inclusion is crystal clear. He cites uh, news organisations as an example because their role is to follow and interpret what is going on in the world, a world in which one in seven people has a disability. And he says, if you don't have people with disabilities on staff, how could you possibly understand the experiences of a significant portion of the population? It makes so much sense when you read it. Yet, very often, we design our organisations for neurotypical people and measure staff performance against standard performance measures. But as business leaders, we really need to think differently about different thinking because neurodiversity can transform the fortunes of our organisations. So here is a map of some of the conditions that fall under the umbrella of neurodiversity. 
and we've highlighted some of the challenges most commonly presented. In education terms, these challenges would be referred to as specific learning difficulties, but there's no one type and very often there are clusters of characteristics. As found in the Achieve Ability Employment Survey published first in 2018, individuals are more likely to have two or more neurodivergent labels. So for workplaces, it's much more beneficial to think of neurodivergence as a whole rather than the individual labels that fall within it. So in contrast, here's a very similar image, uh, only this time the focus is on the skills, the talents and the positive traits that neurodivergent individuals commonly have. And just looking at these unique strengths, you can see the great benefits they would bring to organisations in terms, uh, or sorry, in teams across many different industries. So let's look more closely at the challenges we're all facing today uh, by having to work remotely due to the coronavirus pandemic. For many of us, this is a completely new concept and way of working. For your staff with neurodiverse conditions, the new way of working can be particularly overwhelming. And here are some of the challenges that your colleagues could be facing in their new environment. The top of the list is anxiety. People with neurodiverse conditions have been finding ways around their condition since their school days. They coped with it, but they've probably been working at 120% just to get to where their colleagues get to every day. So this additional pressure often manifests itself in depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem. So at a time when routines and working practices are changing, people will be feeling more anxious than ever before. Next, we have time management. So many people with neurodiversity struggle with time management. Some may even enter into a zen-like state of flow where they're intensely engaged and fully immersed in an activity. And very often the boundaries between work and home life can become blurred, leading to stress and overworking. Looking at planning and prioritizing. So when working remotely from your team, it's all too easy to lose track of what tasks are most critical and of business priority. People with dyspraxia, for example, can have difficulties with sequencing. And this could manifest as making errors when inputting data or struggling with timekeeping or in planning tasks on a, a weekly or daily basis. Organisational skills can also be an issue. For example, employees with dyslexia may struggle with their short-term memory, which can make organisational tasks such as remembering instructions and meetings or managing their inbox much more challenging. Sensory overload such as background noise, bright lights, and digital distractions can be a challenge for everyone, but for people with neurodiverse conditions, it can be particularly overwhelming. And at a time when schools are closed and many parents are balancing childcare, homeschooling and working from home, these sensory challenges are really put to the test. Working memory is anything that you can keep in your attention and work with at any one time. And people with dyslexia and dyspraxia, for example, often suffer with poor working memory. This means that some people are more likely than others to forget things, go off on tangents, have random thoughts, and will often find it hard to concentrate on more than one thing at once. So frequent distractions, competing demands, um, and pressure to work on a number of tasks at once can all add to the problem. Processing speed. So some people with neurodiverse uh, conditions can at times have a slower processing speed than their colleagues. And this means they struggle to focus attention and visually scan and sequence, sequence information. So what can we do to make it easier for our neurodiverse teams and remove some of these barriers? Well, first up, we can educate ourselves to become more aware of the challenges that individuals may be facing. So think about some of the channel, ch challenges, if I can get my words out, uh, that I've just highlighted. Also, we could be more accommodating and supportive to reduce as much of the stress as possible from our team and contribute to better mental health. We could highlight to our team our organisation's commitment to supporting neurodiversity and the actions our organisation is taking to improve their experience at this time. We can help our staff to set routines 
accommodate their preferred ways of working and be very clear in communicating expectations and priorities. But most importantly, talk to our team, ask them what it is they need and really find out what their pain points are and their barriers are. So some of the most helpful things that we can do are ensuring our team members set absolute finish times at the end of each day. You know, it's too easy to sit at our desk at home after hours to finish whatever task we're working on and forget the time. But this is not productive in the long term, especially if it becomes the norm. We can encourage our team to take proper and regular breaks away from their desk, even if it's just uh, to take a walk to the kitchen, boil the kettle for a cuppa, uh, the break away from the screen is so important and we should also encourage our team to spend some time with friends and family <clears throat> whether this is virtually or from a safe distance in person you know this face time works wonders for reducing anxiety and keeping the spirits high we can help our team to set priorities and work plans ahead of time so adding this little bit of structure to the working day really helps to focus minds and concentrate on the task at hand, especially when the world around us is in constant flux. And finally, we can set time in our calendar for video calls. Again, it goes back to the benefits of having some face time with our team. A video call can tell you so much more than an audio call, as you can see body language and other visual cues to really get a feel for how your team is doing. And try not to add too many ad hoc or impromptu meetings, you know, allowing your team to focus on the, on the tasks assigned to them. Just like when we were all in a shared office, too many interruptions can have a real impact on getting things done and you know, we may lose that sense of achievement. So I think that really brings me to the, the end of my part of the presentation. Um, I hope you find it useful and uh, you're going away with a better understanding of some of the challenges that your staff and your colleagues could be facing at this time during remote working. So I'd like to pass you on to Louise now, who, as I said earlier, will delve uh, a little bit deeper into some of the ways that we at TechSelf are helping staff with neurodiversities by removing the everyday communication barriers that uh, they face. So Louise, over to you just when you're ready. Louise there. Sorry, my mic hadn't uh, updated there. So um, thanks very much, Donna. Um, that was a, a great overview. Um, so considering all of the things that we have discussed so far, um, we at Texel would like to make those day-to-day -day tasks as easy as possible for all of your teams. Um, at TextHelp, we have long understood the importance of supporting employees both inside and outside the office and it's our genuine desire to help people communicate that sparks us to create our smart, easy to use support technologies that allow people to read and write with greater confidence. One of our most powerful tools uh, is Read and Write, which is used by over 25 million people worldwide to help increase their productivity. So Read and Write helps all staff work smarter, more efficiently and more accurately. Read and Write was primarily designed to support individuals with neurodiverse conditions, but we're finding that it is more and more used by neurotypicals um, as they're also benefiting from using the software too. At a time when so many of you have migrated to remote working practices, our tools can really help support all of your staff and I wanted to run through some of the key features that will be of use at this time. Don't forget, uh, today's session is being recorded, so you can easily share the information on Read and Write with any of your colleagues after today's session. So we know the way people work, or the way individuals work is different, which is why we at TextHub have developed um, support across a range of platforms and devices, including Microsoft, Google, and Apple and Android tablets. So no matter what platform you use, you still get exactly the same support tools are relevant of your platform. Our tools are also designed to help in four main areas. So we look at literacy, productivity, reporting, and collaboration. So in the workplace today there are so many systems and tools that we use on a daily basis and Read and Write is designed to work with all of these. So whether you have a PDF document to review 
a report to write in Google Docs, or a briefing document in Microsoft Word. Read and Write will help provide the support you need to make those everyday tasks much easier. I'm now going to uh, go in a little bit deeper into each of these areas now, and I'd like to introduce you to Lucy. So, um, before I introduce you to Lucy as well, here's a quick overview of just some of the, the things or some of the ways in which Read and Write can support individuals. So by reading web pages, converting documents, so it's all about that alternative format of information as well. So now I'd like to introduce you to Lucy. So Lucy is remote working at the moment, but still has the same tasks that she would normally have in the office. In fact, working from home, she has seen her email in inbox jump up with more people having to communicate with her through email rather than just popping over to her desk. So what Lucy can do is launch the Read and Write toolbar onto her screen and have her emails read aloud to her. She can do this while grabbing a quick coffee, which is helping her to be productive and getting through her emails much quicker. She's also had a lot of reading to do that day already. So having audio support helps ease her visual stress and visual overload of having to stare at the screen all day. Next on the to-do list is to review a PDF, which her boss has asked her to make notes on. Usually Lucy would print this off and sit at her desk and read through and make her notes that way. But now she is working from home, she doesn't have access to a printer. But by using Read and Write, she can have the PDF document read aloud and make the notes on the side by herself. With Read and Write, Lucy can also customise the toolbar to work for her. Now that she's working from home, the lighting is much brighter than she's used to, so she can turn on the screen masking tool, which puts a colour filter over the screen to make it easier for her looking at the bright screen all day. She can also flick between screen masking and our ruler tool to help her track and keep focus, particularly when she's processing more wordy documents or emails. So it's lunchtime and Lucy has decided now that the sun is shining, it's the perfect time to get out and get her dedicated exercise time. But she knows she's running a bit behind with her work today. Lucy can convert the document that she's been asked to review into an MP3 audio format and listen to it on her walk. When she comes back, she can jot down some of her feedback and she's caught up again for the day. Lucy now has to share her feedback with her colleague, but is worried about her spelling and grammar. So she uses the Check It tool in Read and Write to proof her work, making sure it's up to a high standard and she can show off the great work that she has done. Lucy has also had a busy day of trying to homeschool her young children, but has been asked to give her thoughts on a briefing document. Rather than sitting down to write her feedback, Lucy can add a voice note into the document quickly, allowing all the contributors to review, helping Lucy work smarter in her new working environment. Lucy has also been asked to review a white paper report that will affect her organisation. She's been asked to pull out some of the key findings from the report and share with the relevant teams. She can highlight the information from the report in different colours to indicate the different teams that this will be relevant to. She can then collate them all together in a separate document and make her own notes before sharing with the various teams, all included with a reference so it's clear to everyone where the information came from. Again, this is helping her work more efficiently and avoid between flicking between documents and having to copy and paste information, or even trying to remember where she left off in a document. It also helps her work more collaboratively with her colleagues as she can share information with them much, much faster. It's approaching the end of the day and she's been asked to update an old PDF document with new information that has to go on the website by the end of the day. Rather than starting from scratch, Lucy can use our inbuilt OCR scanner, select the PDF and convert this into a Word document. She can then make the relevant changes quickly click on the PDF and the document is ready to go. So that's really a quick overview of Lucy's day, but just to give you a bit of insight into how Read and Write is working for organisations um, currently. So we have one testimonial here. Um, this is Fui and Fui works in the financial services and he's been using Read and Write for a number of years to help him do those day-to-day -day tasks. So Fui commented, when you start in a new company, first impressions count. 
Read and Write allows me to listen to emails and documents that I've written. I can hear errors in my text that I wouldn't be able to identify just by reading them. This helps me draft high quality responses and solutions to clients. So Read and Write is really available to support everybody, irrelevant of what sector or what job role you have. It's there to make those everyday tasks for every job as easy as possible. So that really brings us to the end of the presentation today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, before we wrap things up though, I'm going to hand back to Rachel um, to take us through some of the questions that you will have sent through. So thanks very much everybody and thanks Rachel, over to you. Hey, thank you, this is Rachel with IAAP. Thank you, Louise and Donna. Let's see, we did have a question. Oh, <laughs> I think it, it moved out of the thing. I, I wanted to go back to it though. Um, Let's see if there was any. Yep, this is Sam. The yeah. question oh, was. Sorry. The question was. Fast. About... <laughs> go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just saying that it was answered just so fast it was there and then it was gone. So go ahead. Right. So the question was um, Are these products and tools available for use with the Microsoft Office Suite in 365 um, since some of your samples were using Google, uh, Google Suite? They are, yes. Um, so um, I used a couple of different GIFs there just to show the difference. But yes, we work with um, Microsoft Office and 365 and obviously Google as well. So we can support um, the, the different platforms. Okay, thank you. I had a question about, uh, let's see, I'm almost sure I have people with dyslexia in my team and I want to be able to support them better. How can I raise this with them without causing any offense? Uh, yeah, I can take this one. I think uh, the important thing is to really start uh, and have the conversation, um, not necessarily with the individual to start with. You can look at starting it organization-wide um, because what you may find is although you may be aware of one person there may be more people that it affects so even having a an organization-wide email um, asking if anybody um, feels they need more support um, another way uh, I think Donna had mentioned as well is having those um, network groups within organizations so actually having those advocates in the organization um, are great because they can really become the voice for those individuals and you find the more people talk about it the more um, open it becomes and even what you can find as well is if you know somebody in the organization has say dyslexia they will probably more than likely have some form of support and when individuals see that support being used they kind of become aware that that could be helpful for me and that's one of the, the things that we do in, in working with organizations is try and highlight that providing a standard to everybody means that information and the support is accessible to everyone so i think it's just a thought really having those conversations as a whole organization and really creating that from the culture of your organization um, and you know even if you're wanting just to chat to that individual bringing it up, asking, is there any support they need? Is there anything that you can help with? And just opening up that communication channel between yourself and that individual is, is really key. Okay, thank you. We do have a couple of questions starting to come in now, so we'll go through those. So there, these are great features. For the individuals using these features, is there a training session that goes along with it? Again, yeah, I can help with that one. Yes, we do. Uh, we have uh, a number of different training options. Um, we have dedicated trainers within TextHelp who, um, if you're wanting to have trainers actually on site, they can train individuals in your organization to be the, the, the Read and Write champions. Um, so they can ask those. We also have a training portal, um, which allows individuals to train themselves. They can watch videos. They can um, learn as they go. So a number of different training options available um, for anybody who, who needs that additional support. Okay, thank you. Are there any ISO standards that need to be followed by employers before hiring needs to be done? Oh, that's one I'm not sure of myself. Um, 
I can have a look into that and see. I know the, the ISOs that we have are very much built in around our um, secure development, but um, it's something I can look into to further. Okay, maybe that's something we can follow up on afterwards. Yep, definitely. Let's see. Okay, I have another question about the pricing for the products. Are there any, uh, for businesses in higher ed, is there any difference maybe between yes, for so nonprofits? Yeah, we have a number of different pricing um, models for different organizations uh, and education. So if anybody's interested, please reach out um, and we can discuss that with you. Um, again, we have different tiers of pricing. If you want to buy it for an individual, if you want to buy it for a number of individuals or actually even buy it for the organization wide, we have different models to work with that. So happy to, to discuss that with, with whoever um, is interested. Okay. And a few more here. How often do updates occur to ensure that it is compatible? Yeah, so we are an agile company. Um, so all of our development, um, we, we work in sprints. So um, again, you're looking sort of probably two, sort of two months is usually the, the sort of standard, um, but that can vary depending on update needs. Um, we know that platforms are constantly changing, systems are constantly changing. Um, so we have to reflect with that as well. So um, if there's new updates coming out of devices or software, we always make sure that um, our software is compatible with that. Um, so, so we're reflective with that as well. Okay, thank you. I see one more question in here. Right now, Focus is helping neurodiverse staff, but what are your thoughts on how to encourage and promote those staff into leadership and management roles? Uh, yeah, I think this really goes back again to embedding, especially the equality and diversity into your organization's culture. Um, if people feel that as an organization, um, they are encouraging people from uh, different backgrounds with different abilities um, and that they're getting the support they need. People will feel more confident to put themselves forward for that role. Um, so I think one of the big things is really looking at what your organization is doing to encourage individuals to, to step forward and come into those roles. You know, for a lot of people who have neurodiverse conditions, it can sometimes be just giving them that support um, which builds their confidence. You know, they're more than capable and in fact many cases have, have much greater strengths um, that can be brought to certain roles. We know in particular there's one organisation we work with, uh, GCHQ in the UK, and they were particularly looking for and recruiting individuals with neurodiverse conditions um, because of their sequencing skills, their attention to detail skills. So in some roles, actually having those neurodiverse conditions can be a real, real benefit. So I think, again, really looking at the culture of your organization, having those open conversations, making people aware that support is available. Um, and even if you're maybe not aware, making sure that individuals can address that, can bring it up. So it's all about those open conversations, those networks. You know, we're seeing in a lot of organizations different kind of sub diversity inclusion groups popping out. You know, you, we have dyslexia uh, champions, um, you know, even in organizations that are so broad, you have LGBT, race, gender groups. So even those little subgroups coming out from, from your diversity. Autism, we know, is um, a huge um, neurodiverse um, topic at the minute, which organizations are really trying to tap into that um, talent. So having those networking groups as well and um, allowing that form to continue and have, again, those open conversations. Thank you. Let's see. How does this program interact with screen magnifiers and other screen reading software? Uh, yeah, so I mean, at its core, Read and Write is a screen reader itself. Um, so we would always recommend, you know, 
not trying to use too many different screen readers because the, the end user experience may not always be the best, but we are compatible um, with other tools. We work very well with Dragon, which we know is a, a really popular um, speech to text tool. Um, so again, we are compatible with, with some of those tools. But again, if you've any questions about any in particular, feel free to contact us so, and we'll be happy to discuss that further. Um. I have another question here. To my experience, individuals with NDV have a problem to see what they need and what kind of help will help help them. Do you have some kind of test of what can be helpful? Um, in terms of tests, that, that wouldn't be something we would do, but we do have different resources. Um, and we have neurodiversity guides which sort of break that down into different conditions and certain things that can help there. So again, reach out and we'll be happy to share some further information um, about different conditions um, that can hopefully be helpful for you. Okay, I think I have another question about, can you talk to some of the pro productivity benefits of the read and write? Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, I think Donna maybe mentioned that read and write um, was very much developed to support individuals with neurodiverse conditions, but we're seeing more and more the benefits of, of productivity coming through. Um, for partic in particular cases, I know for me, um, obviously with the move to remote working, um, I'm now in my dining room, which is lovely and bright. Um, but when we have particularly good weather, the sun comes in um, quite a lot, which I do find struggling with the screen. So putting on the likes of the screen masking tool can sort of soften the screen. So from a visual point of view, it helps you focus that little bit um, easier. So you're not having to take more and more breaks from your screen uh, and again, just helping with that visual stress. We have inbuilt OCR scanners, which again uh, can be great. Um, I mentioned um, previously, if you have to update information that was in PDFs, which we know are quite inaccessible at times, you can actually create that into an editable Word document. So saving you huge amounts of time rather than trying to recreate um, information. Our research tools as well, really, really helpful, particularly if you are searching for information, whether it's on the web and PDFs, pulling together um, from different sources. You can highlight all that information, collate it together and really helps um, that process become even quicker. So just a couple of those features. Um, again, if you are interested in finding out more about um, our productivity tools in detail, drop me uh, an email or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to go through those uh, in a, a, a bit more detail for you. Okay, this is Rachel again. It seems to be the end of our questions. We can just give folks a, a minute here if there's anything to add. And I just wanted to mention to Jim, to thank you for your feedback. We'll make sure our presenters uh, see that. Um, don't see any more questions. So we will be sending out a copy of the slides and a recording and so you'll have access to that. And I did put in the chat that if uh, a lot of people may need um, ask for certificate of attendance for continuing education credits for maybe a certificate that you're working on. So you can email me, I put that in there. I also included in the follow-up email. So you have that if you, if you decide you need it over the next few days, we'll be happy to get those out to you. And I wanted to thank Louise and Donna for joining us today and for today's presentation. And thank you to AI Media for the, providing the captions. And we hope to see you again soon for another IAAP webinar. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone.